On the evening of June 5th, local residents gathered at Sylvia Holden Park, adjacent to Lansdowne Park, after finding out that trees had been cut during the day. Didn't we? And uh, we heard uh, nothing but chainsaws. Um, and I know that you guys were out, a lot of people were out on porches and were quite confused over what was happening. Um, and it turned out that they were clear cutting the green, green space across from our homes. Um, we weren't given any notice, uh, no prior notice that this is going to be taking place. Um, and so, uh, you know, basically, um, another neighbor, another community member, and myself uh, chained our bikes to. Uh, backhoe uh, to stop the pro process and um, I guess uh, word of this got to City Hall and our councillor David Chernyshenko stopped it from his end as well. There was a rally at three o'clock and uh, David Chernyshenko came down and answered a lot of really important questions that everybody had uh, at that point. Uh, basically it, it turned out that the contracting company um, Ellis Dawn, I believe it is, uh, acted totally autonomously and without consent of the city and uh, started to rip out the trees. Um, the city claims that they didn't know anything about it, that they didn't give the go-ahead. Um, so that is sort of the story that, that we got at this point and uh, the, the whole process has stopped until at least June 11th at this point before we have a, a formal notification and before there are sev several issues have to be uh, um, basically addressed before the process can start again. And the law they broke was under the Environmental Protection Act for migrating birds. Any migrating bird, the nest site must not be disturbed, whether intentionally or inadvertently. So whether they intended to disturb the birds that are nesting as they migrate, or whether they did it purposefully, and we know they did it purposely for these trees, but they also disturbed the birds in these adjacent trees. This morning when we were here, there were many birds that were frantic. They were looking for their nests. They were calling in the trees for their mothers. There were squirrels. One squirrel was dead in here. I don't know if he was run over today or if, he, or if he'd been previous roadkill, but there was at least one squirrel run over. We know that chipmunks, squirrels, and rabbits all live in this area, and also a lot of birds. Today we saw cardinals and finches and jays. This, this is a beautiful strip of land for all of us, giving us shade and shadow and comfort and a place to go and play. And it's also a place where the animals call home. So they were pretty desperate today as their homes were being destroyed. So, but anyway, I want to say the signs, the young people on this street have just done an incredible job on the signs. Let's all give them a What's your name? Sophia. Okay, and this is your sign? Yeah. What's it say? Save our trees. We're the neighborhood kids and we want our trees to stay. If you feel the same, join us at 7.30 meeting on the corner of Adelaide and Homewood to light candles and sing songs to show that we use the green space. So what do you think about them cutting down the trees? I don't like it. They're also killing animals' houses. One resident had brought with them a newsletter from Jim Watson in the 1990s. The current mayor was formerly a city councillor for the area. In the newsletter, he takes issue with problems for development of Lansdowne Park, including rezoning Lansdowne to commercial, traffic problems, unfair competition to local merchants, and turning the Cattle Castle into a shopping mall. He instead proposes a solution with more green space, restoring the Cattle Castle as a barn, and using not 
municipal tax dollars, but federal or provincial funds to do the refurbishment. Currently, as mayor, he is pushing forward the private development solution that includes a shopping mall, a mega theater, and condominium development. There has been sustained opposition to this private development, culminating in two court cases at the Ontario Court of Appeal. Friends of Lansdowne recently lost their appeal, but the Lansdowne Park Conservancy will have their appeal heard in July, taking issue with the sole sourcing of the development as opposed to a competitive process that would see the best interest of all represented. Where were you? They must give you notification if they're digging up something dangerous. And I have to caution you all, they're talking about soil remediation. What they're talking about is digging up old contaminated soil that has been sitting under this land for some years. When they dig it up, it is going to get disturbed. When we asked them today, they said they'd put a cloth barrier to here, and they wouldn't dig if it was windy. I asked them about remediation and what remediation is going to be, and I asked them if it was going to be anything beyond digging it up, moving it to the other side of the park, and then putting it under the children's playground there. And that is what they're doing, because they have a policy not to take it off-site, because if they truck it around the city, it's too dangerous. But it's going to be dug up right here. And it's going to be moved across the park to under what they call a playground. That is a travesty. And we all have to continue to educate ourselves about what's happening and complain to the city and say, you can't do that. Don't you dig until you make sure my children are safe. So people can do just what, what these guys are doing right now, you know, uh, express themselves through, um, you know, writing to the city, writing to our councillor, writing to our mayor who is completely absent in this whole process, um, and just really staying informed. We as citizens, this, it's up to us at this point. Um, you know, we need to make sure that we stand strong and, um, and really make sure that, uh, that the injustice of this whole process is, is revealed. We shall overcome. That we shall overcome. That we shall overcome.